Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. Talk. And once again, on behalf of Alice and myself, and all of the boys and girls in Bible Talk, we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue on in our search of Christianity, looking in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus taught as what should be normal Christianity. That is the definition of Christianity, is Amen. to be found in the Sermon on the Mount. So we're going to be starting today in Matthew chapter 7, looking at judgment. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. This is, this is this a is very, serious. very important, yeah. but a somewhat difficult subject. Mm. So I'm going to ask you again, and I remind you, I think this is truly important. Make sure, don't come to a Bible study without a Bible. No, no, no. <laughs> and you would be a really, really good idea for you to have pen, pencil, and paper to jot down some notes. If you want to refer to, go back and look at something, you can make yourself a little note. Mm -hmm. And I will say this again, test what I say. Amen. Go into the Scriptures, search the Scriptures, search the law and the testimony mm. to see if what I'm saying lines up with the Word of God. If it does, you better apply it in your life. If it doesn't, why are you bothering watching me? Mm. And just get off, don't watch me, pray for me. But test me. Don't trust me, test me. Amen. Before we start, I'm going to ask Alice if you would ask God's blessing upon our time together. Okay. Father, we just praise you and thank you, Lord God. We just ask, Father, that the word that comes out would be powerful, which we know it is, and touch hearts and change lives. And Lord, let those who are listening heed this word and do it. We just praise you and thank you for all that you do, Lord God. We love you and just give you all glory and honor. Amen. Amen. And I want to pray, Father, that you would not let anything come out of my mouth that you did not put in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Why don't you, you're doing so well here. Why don't you go ahead and do me a favor and read okay. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Okay. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you to pieces. And that was? That was chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Oh, as opposed to 1 through 2. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's oh. what, never hurts us to hear more of the Word of God. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yes, this, this truly is an important topic, and, and a, a difficult one in many ways. So I'm going to start by doing a little preamble. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Solomon wrote, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, long ago, he said that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. But in order to hate evil, you have to recognize it. Yes. Is that not true? Amen. It says in the, in the letter to the Hebrews, in Hebrews 5.14, it says, But the solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Yes. All right? This is about discernment, mm -hmm. okay? It's about judgment. It's about being able to recognize evil. And you know what? It's about hating evil. Starting in our own lives. Mm -hmm. We should hate evil in our own lives. Be quick to recognize it. Be quick to feel remorse because it's there. Mm -hmm. Be quick to repent and be quick to bear fruit in accordance to that repentance. But that's another topic. The preamble is I want to give you some warnings from Scripture. Okay. All right. And this by no means is a complete list, a partial list, but I think you'll get the gist. 
as as he was sitting, Jesus was on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to, said to them, see to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name saying, I am anointed and will mislead many. That's Matthew 24. I read verses 3 to 5. Now, if you go read that. And you may say, well, it says Christ. Many will come saying that they are Christ. They're not, Christ is, the word that is used here in Greek, is the word for anointed. I don't think a lot of people, and uh, people misread this and think, well, there are going to be a lot of people here, there, saying and everywhere that saying that they're Christ. Jesus. Right, yeah. and they're not saying they're Jesus. They're saying that they have God's anointing. They're anointed. Right. That makes right? a big difference. But that's what it says here, yeah. literally, yes. in the Greek. Yeah. It says anointed, all right? Um, Jesus said now in Matthew 7, let me go back to 7, mm -hmm. but, but here, his first, in Matthew 24, talking about the end of the age, talking about the things that will precede his coming, he says that many are going to be misled because of people who are claiming to have God's anointing. Mm -hmm. All right? So if you go back in Matthew 7, where Alice started, and I'm going to read from verse 15. It says, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. What is the ministry of a prophet? He's talking about false prophets, and they're, they're wolves in sheep's clothing, right? Mm -hmm. What's the ministry of a prophet? To speak for God. To speak for God? Okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly it is. That's what, the word, that's what the word literally means in the Greek, prophetes, right. and it means to speak for. To call people to repentance. Mm -hmm. That is it. In Lamentations chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 14. Lamentations 2, 14. God is speaking through Jeremiah and saying, Your prophets have seen for you false and foolish visions, and they have not exposed your iniquity so as to restore you from captivity. But they have seen for you false and misleading oracles. Right? Right? To expose their iniquity is to show their sin, to reveal their sin. Right. But the purpose is not to bring condemnation. The purpose is to restore the sinners from captivity. Because if you sin, Jesus said, you are a slave of sin. In Matthew 24, I'll go back to that. In verse 11, Jesus said, many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Many will lead. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. And then in Mark 13, 22, kind of talking about the same thing, it says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show signs and wonders in order to lead astray, if possible, the elect. Right. So now, so often today, it seems like well, the, the test of something is they can do signs and wonders and miracles. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when, when Moses went into... Egypt to proclaim to the Pharaoh, let my people go on behalf of God. And he threw down his, his staff and it became a serpent. Guess what? Mm -hmm. The Pharaoh's magicians came out and did the same thing. Exactly. When God brought frogs up that covered the land, guess what? The Pharaoh's magicians, the Magi, they came along and they did the same thing. Don't for a moment think that the devil and his clique, his minions, can't perform signs and wonders. Right whether they're real or not, because there is such a thing as optical illusion, the point is that they can, and people are being led astray just because they're seeing these signs. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, this, this e wicked, this evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. Right. Okay? I'll give you a great example. Okay. In the book of Acts, have you heard of Simon the Magician? Yes. In Acts chapter 8, I'm, I'm going to start reading from verse 9. Now there was a man named Simon who formerly was practicing magic in the city and astonishing the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. And they all, from smallest to greatest, were giving attention to him, saying, This man is what is called the great power of God. And they were giving him attention because he had for a long time astonished them with his magic arts. Because somebody apparently, not necessarily really, but even if it seems really, 
is doing signs and wonders, that is not a cause to follow them. What is the cause to follow them? The preaching of Jesus Christ, that Christ be lifted up. Amen. You see, Paul wrote to the believers in Corinth. Now remember, this is a congregation that he had started, that he had taught. He said, and I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 4, and then I'm going to go to 13 through 15. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. For such men are false prophets, false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. You see, it's about the gospel, okay? They preach a different gospel. And, you know, he said there in, in that passage, I don't care who it is. If it's a, an apostle, an angel of God, mm -hmm. you know, if they preach a different gospel, let them be they accursed. Preached. The test is to see the Jesus that they're preaching, not the signs they can do, not the promises that they make to you, right? You know, Paul, he went on to write in Acts chapter 20, Acts 20, 29 to 31. He said, I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be on the alert. Remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish, admonish each one with tears. I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this so you get the, the sense that what throughout is? the New Testament, there is warning about in the days that we live in, that there will be false teachers, false prophets. They can come showing signs and wonders. Mm. They can have the approval of men. They can have people saying that this is the great, this is a, the, the great work of God. Yeah. But you need to test it to see if it's true. Amen. Peter wrote the same thing. His, you know, they're in agreement. Mm -hmm. This is not unique to any one person. Jesus spoke of it. Paul spoke of it. Peter spoke of it. John spoke of it. Peter wrote, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Their greed. Watch to see who is driven by greed, okay? I said John, John the Apostle, in 1 John 4, 1, he said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. He also wrote in the second chapter of, of his letter there, 1 John chapter 2, he said, Children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us, but they went out so that it would be shown that they are not all of us. These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. That's 1 John, the second chapter. I read verses 18 and 19, and then in chapter 2, verse 26. Okay, I'm going to go back to Paul and his letter to the Romans. He said, now I urge you, brethren, Keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learned and turn away from them. To the Thessalonians, mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19 to 21, Paul wrote, Do not quench the spirit. 
Do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Jesus, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, back in chapter 7, in verse 16, he said, You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes nor figs from thistles, are they? And then I want to go back to the Old Testament, because that's where so much of this came from, to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. We're going to talk about not judging, but we're going to talk about examining, mm -hmm. testing, mm -hmm. proving, trying, and in some cases, judging mm -hmm. that God demands of us. You know, years and years ago, I, I flew back in, the, I'm talking about the early 60s to the mid 60s. Uh, I flew as an air crewman in the U.S. Navy. Now, that's during the time of a very hot Cold War. I mean, I was in the service during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, things were, I mean, just so antagonistic. We were on the brink of war, it seemed, many, many times while I was in the, in the service. Mm -hmm. And my job was I flew up around in the very far reaches of the North Atlantic Ocean on what was then called the Dew Line, D-E-W. You know what that means? Yeah. It's, you do. It's some water. <laughs> Dew on the branches. Uh, however, Do the military know. thought that it meant <laughs> the distant early warning line. Ah, okay. that do. Yes, because they wanted to be warned of incoming missiles. They didn't want to, this is back in, like I said, this is in the early 60s. They wanted to know as soon as a missile was launched, and they didn't have the technology that exists today. Mm -hmm. So we were flying around the borders of Russia, watching for, for missiles to come flying. Well, I was also involved in anti-submarine warfare. So that's basically what we were watching. We were watching for movement of, of aircraft coming out of Russia, mm. for missiles coming out of Russia, for submarines coming out of Russia. And our purpose was to examine everything that came out of Russia to see what it was. So you were and judging. To, wasn't I judging? Yeah. You know, we had technology back in those days, and I, I don't even know what, how much more sophisticated it might be today, but it was called IFF, Identification Friend or Foe. So our job was, if we saw anything coming out of that northern part of, of Europe, Russia, mm -hmm. it, was, it was my task to determine whether it had evil intent right. or not. Was it a friend or was it a foe? Was it a friend or foe? Did it have evil intent? Mm. What, did it represent a danger to the United States of America? Mm. And in, in the case, I was testing it. I was judging it. Mm -hmm. All right? I can't tell you how many, how many planes I judged. And I either judged them to be a, a friendly aircraft or, I mean, you know, there were commercial aircraft that came out. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for military aircraft. I'm looking for imminent danger. Right. That was my job. That's what I was trained to do. I was looking for submarines. I can remember chasing a whale one time. I mean, technology was different back in those days. But the purpose was to test everything that came out of there mm -hmm. to see whether it represented a danger or not. Right. Is that what Jesus had in, his, in mind when he said, don't, don't judge? Because my task was to judge. Amen. And it was a good and honorable task mm -hmm. at the time. Don't you think... From the scriptures, all of the scriptures I just read, and they are a minor part of, of what's there. Right. That the enemy, and we have an enemy, we have an adversary, and his desire is to kill. His desire is to destroy. His desire is to steal. He wants to bring destruction into the body of Christ. Who's supposed to be on guard to watch and see what's coming at us if it is good intention? Mm -hmm. To bless or bad intention to, to destroy. Mm -hmm. It's the watchman. Well, it is the watchman. But you want to know something? You know who it is in your life first and foremost? It's you. That's right. You are responsible to test all things, to hold, to examine all things, and hold fast to that which is good. To judge, to test, to examine, to prove. Mm -hmm. You know, I, an example, and Alice and I were talking about this on the way over here today. It's just like, you, you know, when Paul was in Berea. Yes. And as was his practice, he went to the synagogue and he went and he shared to, about Jesus Christ being the promised Messiah of Israel. And that's what he's in the synagogue telling these Jews. And 
Did that not cause him problem? Go read the book of Acts and you'll see what kind of problems it caused him. Mm -hmm. But when he went to Berea, it says, and this is the comment, it says that they were more noble-minded because they listened to what Paul said. Mm -hmm. But then they went and they searched the scriptures, scriptures. to see whether what he said was true. true or not true. Yes. Right? And Paul, the word of God says that they were more noble-minded because they did that. Right. You need to be searching the scriptures. When you hear a teaching, when you hear this teaching, when you hear any teaching, you need to be searching the scripture to see whether indeed it's true, if it's of God or not. Because there are a lot of... I'm, listen, now. How many we don't seem to believe this. Read? <laughs> and that's just, like I said, a, a small portion of it. Right. There are so many people out there who right. are calling themselves the anointed. And what they are teaching and preaching is not the word of God. It's not... You know, I, again, we just we we're just uh, sharing this with a, a dear brother and sister here, Morris and Joanna Barrett. If you want to know, dear brother and sister. Amen. And we're talking about it. And I said one of the things that we need to look at is the fact that Paul wrote to Timothy, speaking of these same last days mm -hmm. that Jesus was speaking of in Matthew chapter twenty-four, and he said, you know, in those last days, perilous times will come. Yes. There is great peril. This is a matter of life and death. This is not a game. We're not playing church here. That's why I said we're in search of what real Christianity is. And this is life and death. But he, one of the things he said, you know, men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, rather than lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. But he said men will hold to a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Mm -hmm. What's the power? The word. Well, the Holy, Spirit. the Holy Spirit is first and foremost the power of God, right? Mm -hmm. That's where, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have the power of God. Bada bing, bada boom. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's not real difficult. Assuming that you have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, just ask God the Father. Mm -hmm. Ask Him for the Holy Spirit. And that takes care of that. But the other thing is, it says, Paul wrote, and he said, that the word of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. The word of the cross. The word of the cross is that Christ came and he died for our sins. Is that yes. not I mean? He did for us what we could never do for ourselves. He went. Nobody took his life. He said he gave his life. Freely and he gave, gave his yes. life because the Father sent him to do that. All right? To take away the stain of sin from our lives. Mm -hmm. Because it took blood to do it. All right? It says in Leviticus that there's no atonement for sins without the shedding of blood. For the life is in the blood. The power of God is that we've been cleansed by that blood. Yes. The gospel starts with that. But you have to recognize that you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. If you're not a sinner, you don't, what do you need a Savior for? Right. He, he came to save us from sin. You know, it, it's nice to talk about. You can go to a lot of churches and hear he came to save you from poverty. He wants you rich. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. He came to save you from being overweight. No, I don't know about that. He came to save you from sin. From the consequence of, consequence of sin, from the stain of sin, for for the damnation that follows eternal sin, for the wages of sin is death. Christ died on that cross. That's the good news. That's the word of the cross. It is important to understand that when you're testing what you're hearing coming from preachers, it's just as important sometimes what they are not saying as what they are saying. Because you see, a half a truth can be a whole lie. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul instructed to Timothy to rightly divide the word of truth. Would you believe I might tell you? Mm -hmm. The Bible clearly states, without doubt, I don't care what translation you have, the Bible clearly states there is no God. It does. It says it at least twice that I can think of in, in the book of Psalms. Yes. Well, it does say that there is no God. Of course, that's taken, that's a half of it says, only the fool says in his heart, there is, there is no, no God. God. Mm -hmm. you so need that whole verse. You, need, you need the whole thing, otherwise that truth becomes a lie. Yes. You need to listen to what's being said, and you need to listen to what's not being said. Because somebody can come along, and they can say all kinds of nice things, and they can quote this scripture and that scripture, but mm -hmm. if they're not preaching the whole word, if they're not preaching the gospel, mm -hmm. which is that Christ died, if they're not preaching the word of the cross, then they're preaching a false gospel. And some of the biggest churches in the United States of America have openly confessed they will not preach about sin. Right. Because it turns people away. 
It turns people off. It hurts their self-esteem. You know what it's going to hurt? It's going to hurt their life for all eternity if they don't hear and respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that he came as an offering from the Father yes. to die in our place to pay the price for our sin. Test what you're hearing. Test. Are you, I'm not asking you to listen to me. I'm asking you to listen to the word of God that I've quoted. These are the times, if these are the times of false prophets, of false apostles, of false teachers, then you know what you need to do? <clears throat> Today is the day of judgment. You need to judge what you're hearing. But what we're going to do in this teaching not today, mm -hmm. but what we're going to do in the next part of this series is look at what Christ meant when he said, do not judge. Because you see, there are things that you are absolutely not supposed to judge. Mm -hmm. There are people you are absolutely not supposed to judge. And by the same token, there are things that you had better be judging, that you had better be testing, that you had better be examining if you hope to attain to the fullness of life in Jesus Christ, okay? I'm going to leave on this on this note, okay? I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you. We're not going to get into Matthew 7 today. In his letter to the church of Ephesus, oh, not, not Paul's, mm -hmm. Jesus' letter, the letter that Jesus sent through the apostle John to the church at Ephesus, he commended he praised the believers there at Ephesus, saying, I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false. Revelation 2.2. Jesus was praising them for having judged those apostles and found them to be false. Now that's in contrast to what Jesus spoke to the church of Thyatira there in Revelation. He said, I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. And she teaches and leads my bond servants astray so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Revelation 2.20. Those are both in the same chapter. On the one hand, he commends the church at Ephesus because they, they judged. And on the other hand, he, he, he expressed displeasure. Is that too weak a word? Mm -hmm. At the church in Thyatira because they tolerated and didn't put to the test Jezebel. Well, we're going to get into this because it's so important. But you're going to have to come back in our next program to see that. Father, we just thank you, Lord God that you give us a discerning spirit, that you give us a gift of discernment to be able to distinguish between what is of you and what is not. Father, that we might not be led astray, that we might not be led off that path of righteousness that you're leading us on. And we thank you for your word, the word of truth that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path that guides us down that narrow way. We thank you and praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. God bless you and goodbye till next time. So I cherish that old rugged cross till my trophies at last.